Dragon Master's Land of the Spring Dragon. Yes, Land of the Spring Dragon, book 14 in the Dragon Master series. Last time they saved the world by rescuing the Naga from Maldred, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens next in this adventure. Chapter 1, Hope for the Bracken. Drake couldn't stop thinking about what had happened to the kingdom of Bracken. Images flashed through his mind. Tall trees snapped in half. Fields, once green with crops, now cracked and crumbled. Wood from broken houses scattered across the dirt. A few hours before, an earthquake had struck. An evil wizard named Maldred had controlled the powerful dragon called the Naga. He'd ordered the Naga to attack Bracken. Drake and the team of Dragon Masters had stopped Maldred, but not in time to save Bracken. The earthquake had destroyed the crops. That meant the whole kingdom would go hungry. We need to fix our land, Drake thought. I will do whatever it takes. Drake, are you listening, said Griffith, the king's wizard. Sorry, Griffith, Drake said, coming out of his thoughts. Drake and two other Dragon Masters, Petra and Rory, were with Griffith in his workshop. In the bottom of King Roland's castle, Petra was reading aloud from a book. Continue, Petra, Griffith said. Everyone, listen closely. We may have found a way to rebuild Bracken. Petra nodded, her blonde curls bouncing. Every year, when winter ends, the spring dragon brings ba spring back to the land of Innis Banba, she, she read from the book. This dragon is connected to nature. She makes plants grow. That's perfect, Rory said. Maybe this spring dragon can make the crops in our kingdom grow back. We will have to go to Inbis Banba and ask the spring dragon for her help, Drake said. Finding this dragon might not be easy, Petra said. The book says she lives in a world hidden inside the Inbis Banba. The only one who can enter this world and find the dragon is her dragon master. Then we shall find the dragon master, Griffith said. The wizard opened a box carved with pictures of dragons. The large green dragon stone glittered inside. Griffith waved his hand over the stone. Show me the dragon master of the spring dragon, he said. The dragon stone began to glow green light and green light shot out of it. I wonder what this new dragon master will be like, Drake thought. A picture appeared inside the light. A girl with curly red hair and freckles stood in a field of wild flowers next to a stone wall or stone well. Her green eyes looked through wire spectacles, and like the other dragon masters, she wore a piece of the dragon stone around her neck. We found her, Drake cried. A new dragon master. The red-haired girl's eyes narrowed. Who said that? she asked. Petra gasped. She heard us. Drake had seen the dragon stone work before. You could see and hear the dragon master inside the green beam of light, but the dragon master usually couldn't see or hear you. Griffith's eyes widened. Uh, this is very unusual. The well must be some kind of portal, he muttered stroking his long white beard. The girl looked into the well. I can see you in the water, she said. I see one skinny wizard and three dragon masters. Why are you spying on me? We aren't spying on you, Drake replied. We need your help. Our kingdom was hit by an earthquake. It destroyed our crops. We read that the spring dragon can make plants grow, Petra added. Can you bring her here to fix our crops, Rory asked. The girl's eyes twinkled. Do people in your land not know the word please? She asked. Please, can you help us? Drake asked. That's not up to me, she said. That is up to Fallon. Is that your dragon's name? Petra asked. The girl nodded. Yes, and I am Breen, she answered. I am Fallon's dragon master, but Fallon is not like other dragons. She belongs to everyone who lives in Inbisbanba. Even though I am her master, I cannot command her to leave the land. She must decide that on her own. Just then, Breen's dragonstone glowed green. She shut her eyes. Drake knew that she was hearing her dragon's voice inside her head. 
Fallon says that she will see one brave dragon master, she said. Rory frowned. Just one? Very few humans are allowed in Fallon's hidden world, Brain answered. Drake shall go, Griffith said. His earth dragon, Worm, can transport there in a flash. There is no time to waste. You'll find me in Maeve's meadow, Brain said, when the green light faded. Drake's stomach fluttered. He and Worm had traveled to faraway lands before, but Drake had always had at least one friend with him. Petra touched Drake's arm. Don't worry, Drake. You can do this, she said. Rory smiled. Go bring us the dragon and save Bracken. I won't let you down, Drake promised. Drake let the wizard's workshop, or left the wizard's workshop. Worm was waiting for him. We need to go to Inbis Banba right away, he told his dragon, to meet a dragon master named Breen in a place called Maeve's Meadow. Can you get us there? Worm nodded, and Drake put his hand on Worm's scales. Let's go, Drake cried. He closed his eyes as a bright green light flashed. Chapter 3 The Test when the light faded away, Drake opened his eyes. Worm had transported them to a field of wildflowers. Breen stood by the well that the dragon stone had shown them. Breen walked over to the dragon and his dragon, or and Breen walked over to Drake and his dragon. She looked up at Worm. Hello, Worm, she said. That's an unusual name for a dragon, isn't it? But I can see why Drake named you that. Then she turned to Drake. Oh, hello, Drake, she said. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, too, Drake said. It's nice that you and your dragon are going to help us. Well, now don't get ahead of yourself, Brain said. Before Fallon will agree to help you, you must find her. Uh, can't you just take me to her? Drake asked. Brain grinned. That would be too easy she said. To find Fallon, you will have to use your courage and your wits, and you'll have to leave Worm behind. Drake's mouth dropped open. Uh, what? he asked. W why? Well, you need to do this on your own, Drake, Brain replied. Besides, there is only room for one dragon in the fairy world. Drake's dragonstone began to glow. He looked at Worm. I wasn't expecting this, Worm, Drake said inside his head. You will be fine, Worm promised him. I'll be here when you return. Drake turned to Breen. Um, okay, I'm ready. I just hope it doesn't take too long to find Fallon. We need to get back to Bracken soon. How long it takes depends on you, Breen told him. It can get, I can get you started, but the rest is up to you. Now, let the challenge begin! Breen skipped across the field, whistling a tune. Chapter 4. The Fairy Mound Drake followed Breen to a small grassy hill. This is a fairy mound, Breen explained. I have heard of that, Drake said. My mother used to tell me stories about the secret fairy world. She said the fairy mound was the way to get in, but I never believed her. Stories, or I never believed her stories were true. Breen smiled. I bet you didn't believe in dragons either until you saw one. Drake smiled back. No, I guess I didn't. There are many different kinds of fairies in the secret world, Brain told him. She touched her dragon stone and it glowed. Then a hole opened up in the hill. Breen stepped inside and Drake followed her. They passed through a dark tunnel that opened up into a field of flowers. This place looked almost like where they had just come from. But Drake could see that it was different. The sky was a strange shade of pink instead of bright blue. The colors on the flowers looked brighter. Welcome to the fairy world. It is similar to our world, but quite a bit different, Breen said. You'll see. Come this way. Drake followed Breen down a path through the meadow. Breen stopped at the start of the forest. The path split two different directions. Which way uh, do we go? Drake asked. Breen stepped to the side. That is up to you, Drake. 
and Drake looked down the two paths. They both led into the woods. How do I know which path will lead us to Fallon, he wondered. Make up your mind, Drake, Breen said in a teasing voice. Hurry now, which will it be? Drake took a deep breath. Suddenly, he heard voices behind them. He turned to see a group of tiny men, none of them higher than Drake's knees, marching toward them. Each one had a white beard and wore a green shirt, green pants, and a pointy red cap. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there, and over and yon, they sang. Drake's eyes got wide. Who are they? he asked. Breen? Those fairies are called redcaps, she explained. They like marching around a lot. The redcaps marched toward Drake and Breen without glancing at them. Then they reached the fork in the road. They marched down the path on the right. Then they stopped. All at once they turned to face Drake. Follow us, they cried. Chapter 5. The Red Caps I think these fairies want to help me, Drake thought. He was about to take a step toward the Red Caps when he stopped and turned to Breen. I guess you won't tell me if we should follow them or not, he said. No, I can't, Breen said. That would be cheating. But can you tell me something about them, Drake asked. Breen twirled her finger around one of her curls. I guess so. What do you want to know? Well, what kind of fairies are they? Drake asked. Are they nice? They are mostly like they mostly like to march around, she answered. But they all they, they do also like to have fun with humans who visit here. Hmm, Drake said. What kind of fun? You are asking too many questions, Drake, Breen said. Choose a path. The red caps had already began to march away. Wait for us, Drake called out. He ran to catch up to the fairies. Breen followed him. The red caps marched into the woods. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over, he, over and yon, they repeated. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon. They repeated again. They marched and marched. Drake kept expecting to reach the end of the woods, but they never did. I think we're going in circles, he said. You are right, Brain agreed. She pointed to a tree with a twisted trunk. We have passed that same tree three times. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon, sang the redcaps. Drake frowned. I guess we shouldn't have followed them, he said. Let's go back to the other path. Drake tried to turn around, but he couldn't. His body swung forward and kept marching behind the redcaps. His legs were moving all on their own. Hey, Drake yelled. Are the redcaps using some kind of fairy magic? He wondered. Drake couldn't slow down or change direction. Behind him, Breen was marching too. They couldn't stop. Drake made his legs move faster. He caught up to the red cap at the end of the line and tapped him on the shoulder. Excuse me, he said. But we would like to stop following you now, please. We need to find Fallon and save my kingdom. The red cap stopped marching. They all turned around and looked at Drake. But you must keep following us, said one. We're having too much fun, said another. Yes, said a third. Going round and round is such a good time. I'm sorry, but I don't have time for games, Drake said. My kingdom needs help. Sorry, one of them said. We can't let you go. You have to let us go sometime, Drake said. How long do you want to keep playing for anyway? The red caps all answered him at once. Forever! <sighs> mm. Chapter 6. A Trick The fairy smiled up at Drake. You want me to march with you forever? You can't make me do that, Drake said. His legs were still moving, marching in place. Yes, we can, one of the red caps said cheerfully. Then they all spun around and began to march again. Drake's legs followed them. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there, over and yon. Drake looked at Breen. You could have warned me about the red caps, he said. I did, she replied. I told you they liked to have fun. 
This isn't fun, Drake complained. Breen shrugged. It's fun for them. Drake marched along the path, thinking, I need to find a way to get the Redcaps to let us go. But all I know about them is that they like to have fun. Fun, Drake repeated, the word on his mind. Back home, the younger kids always wanted to pull him away from the field to play games. Games like sticks and stones, hop and skip, hide and seek. Drake tapped the nearest red cap again, and the fairies all stopped marching. What is it? the red cap asked. I know a game we can play, he said. It's more fun than marching. The red cap's eyes lit up. More fun? What is it called? It's called hide and seek, Drake replied. You close your eyes and count. Breen and I will hide. When you open them, you have to find us. Oh, that does sound like fun, said the red cap. What happens after we find you? Then it's your turn to hide, Drake said. The red caps all huddled together. They whispered to one another. Then they turned back to Drake. We will play your game, they said at once. Great, Drake said. First, you have to release your magical hold on us so we can hide properly. Done, the red cap said, snapping their fingers. Drake tested it. He turned back and took a few steps. My idea is working, he thought. He turned back to the red caps. Perfect, one of the red caps nodded. Now we close our eyes and count, right? Yes, Drake said. The red caps all closed their eyes. One red cap opened his. How high do we count? 10,623, Drake replied. <gasps> okay, the red cap said, and he closed his eyes. Then all the fairies began to count. One, two, three. Drake motioned for Breen to follow him. They hurried back to the fork in the path, away from the red caps. Well, that was pretty funny. Good trick. And how long do you think it's going to take them to count to 10,623? Forever. For a very long time, huh? <laughs> They'll just be counting for the rest of their lives. Well, maybe not the rest of their lives, but for a good portion of this day, they will be counting. So, Chapter 7, Hinky Pink. You tricked the red caps, Brain said, giggling. Those fairies will be busy counting all day. Nicely done. Drake smiled. Thanks, he said. They had reached the fork in the path. Let's try this way now. They took the path on the left, this time and quickly reached the edge of the woods. The path continued across another green meadow. As they walked, a thick fog began to rise. Soon it was so thick that Drake could not see Breen standing right beside him. It's always this foggy, or is it always this foggy here? Drake asked. Not always, Brain answered. The fog rolls in when Hinky Pink visits the fairy world. Uh, who is Hinky Pink? Drake asked. Then a voice came through the fog ahead of them. Fog, fog, beautiful fog. It's great in a field or a hole or a bog. That is Hinky Pink, Brain whispered. Drake strained to see the fairy through the fog, but all he saw was a faint light in the distance. Hinky Pink, did you bring this fog? Drake called out. This fog is mine, I will not lie. I have taken the clouds down from the sky, the fairy answered. I can't see which way to walk, Drake said, and I need to find the spring dragon in a hurry. Can you please make this fog go away? I'm happy when it's dark as night. My lantern is my only light, Hinky Pink replied. But if this fog makes you uptight, you can chase it away with something bright, Drake grunted. Huh. This will not be easy, he thought. Where can I find a bright light? Then Drake looked down at his dragon stone and got an idea. He turned to Breen. Is it cheating if I ask Worm? for some help? I think it is fine as long as he doesn't transport here, she replied. Drake's dragonstone glowed green as he contacted Worm. Worm, can you hear me? Drake asked. 
He heard his dragon's voice in his head. Yes! There is a fairy making a fog down here. Can you make my dragon stone bright enough to burn away the fog? Drake asked. I think so, Worm replied. Drake's dragon stone began to glow, brighter and brighter and brighter. Drake could see Breen now, and up ahead he could make out a strange little man. The man was about Drake's height and wore funny striped pants. He held a lantern in one hand. Hinky Pink stomped his foot. Oh, drat! You've won! Now here comes the sun, he cried. Hinky Pink and the fog both vanished. Drake blinked in the bright sunlight. He could clearly see the path, and up ahead he saw something new. A boy! A boy with black hair and a dragon stone around his neck. Bo! Drake cried. Hmm. Bo? Hmm. <laughs> Chapter 8. A Friend Appears. Drake was surprised to see his best friend in this magical land. How did you get here, Bo? Drake asked. Did Griffith send you? Hurry, Drake, Bo replied, ignoring his question. I know how to find Fallon. Follow me. Drake took a step forward, but stopped. Something doesn't feel right here, he thought. Hurry, Drake, Bo urged. Drake looked at Breen. Bo is my best friend, but it doesn't make sense for him to be here, Drake said. Is this really him? You know I can't help you on this journey, Breen said. Think, Drake. If Bo is your best friend, you should know if it is him. Drake, come on, Bo cried. It's me. It's really me. This boy looks like Bo, Drake thought, but maybe it's a trick. Hema, the golden dragon, could change her shape into any form. Maybe this is a fairy pretending to be Bo. Bo, I am not sure if it's really you, Drake said. Bo frowned. Of course it's me, Drake. I'm your best friend. Bo knows me better than anyone, Drake thought. If this is a fairy and not Bo, then maybe a trick would show me the truth. We always stick together, Bo said. You're right, Drake answered slowly. Like that time you and I went to Maldred's workshop with Dharma and the Gold Dragon. Did he go with them, Polo? No. It's a trick. Exactly, Bo said. That was a pretty scary adventure. Drake stepped forward. Aha! He yelled. Now I know you are not Bo, because Bo didn't go with me to Maldred's workshop. Rory did! The boy's eyes flashed with blue light. No fair! You tricked me, he said. Then the whole body began to glow. The boy transformed bring, into a shining blue horse with glowing eyes. Startled, Drake jumped back and fell to the ground. The horse reared up on its hind legs. It whinnied and then ran away. Chapter 9. The Spooky Forest Congratulations, Breen said, helping Drake to his feet. You tricked the puka. What's a puka? Drake asked. A puka is a fairy creature that can take any shape, Breen replied. It usually takes on animal forms like that horse. Drake sighed. I wish you were allowed to help me, Fallon. I guess you, can tell, you can't tell me if we're getting close. Breen shook her head. I didn't think so, he said. I just hope we find her soon. Drake marched along the path to the edge of the second forest. The needles on the tall pine trees were so dark that they looked black. The trees had black trunks. Drake gulped. This forest looks pretty scary, he said. Is it safe to go in here? You have to decide for yourself, Drake, Breen said. Drake nodded. He looked up at the tall trees and took a deep breath. Okay, let's go. As soon as he set foot in the dark forest, Drake felt a chill. He shivered. An eerie hush fell over him as they made their way through the trees. The earth felt soft and squishy beneath Drake's feet. 
Behind him, Brain began tossing in a sweet voice, or began to sing in a sweet voice. The blackbird was a fine-looking fellow. His feathers were black and his bill was yellow. He flew over the field and over the trees. He soared and he swooped on the soft spring breeze. The song made Drake feel a bit less scared. That's a nice song, Breen. Where did you... He turned and looked back. But Breen was gone. Breen? Drake asked. He turned in a circle, looking for his... Looking for her, his voice got louder. Breen? Breen? His voice echoed against the trees. He was all alone. Drake had never been alone on a mission before. Other dragon masters had always gone with him. So had Worm. He thought of Worm waiting for him by the fairy mound outside the fairy world. I wish Worm were here by my side right now, he thought. Drake gazed at the dark woods all around him. Is Breen playing a trick on me, he wondered, or is she in trouble? I should try to contact Worm. But before he, could, before he could, small fairies floated out of the trees toward him. Their clothes were co the color of tree bark, their hair looked like moss, and their wings were tree leaves. They quickly surrounded him. Chapter 10 the riddle. The tiny fairies closed in around Drake. Who was entered in? Who has entered our forest? One of the creatures asked. My name is Drake, Drake replied. My name is Kiori, and we are the wood sprites, the fairy said. What are you doing here? I am on my way to see the spring dragon, Drake explained. I need her help. Her dragon master Breen thought or brought me here, but Breen just disappeared. Can you help me find her? The wood sprites grouped together and talked in low voices. Then Kiori flew in front of Drake's face. We can help you, she said, but first you must pass a test. There sure are a lot of tests in the, the fairy world, Drake mumbled. Kiori put her hands on her hips. We can go away, you know. Do you want to find the Dragon Master or not? Yes, yes I do, Drake said quickly. What is the test? You must find a flower in the forest and bring it to us, Kiori answered. Just any flower, he asked. Ki Kiori shook her head. No, one special flower. Listen. The wood sprites began to chant at once. Find a flower the color of the sky with a cherry for an eye. It has more petals than the legs of a horse, but fewer than a spider's legs, of course. So it has more than four petals, but fewer than a spider's legs, huh? Drake tried to remember all of the clues, color of the sky, cherry for an eye, more than four petals, fewer than eight petals. I'll find it, Drake promised. Drake jogged through the forest, followed by Kiori. He looked around for the flowers, but he couldn't imagine finding anything in this dark, spooky place. Flowers need sunlight to grow, Drake thought. I need to find a brighter area in this forest. Soon he came to a clearing in the woods where colorful flowers bloomed. Drake ran to the patch of blue flowers and knelt down. Color of the sky, he said, and looked and look. They have bright red centers, just like cherries. These must be the flowers in the riddle. Now, I just have to count the petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, he counted to himself. That is it. Six is more than four and less than eight. That was easy, but that is not the right flower, Kiori said. Drake frowned. But it has a red center, like a cherry, six petals, and it's blue, and the color of the sky. Is it? Kiori asked. Of course the sky is, Drake started to say. But then he looked up to see the pink sky overhead. 
Dun, dun, dun. In the fairy land, it's pink. Yeah. Oh, I forgot, Drake said. The sky in the fairy world is pink, not blue. Kiori giggled. Very good. Keep looking. Drake searched and searched until he found some pink flowers. They had red centers. He counted the petals. Four petals. That's not enough, he said, frowning. He counted the petals on another pink flower. Nine petals, too many. He counted the petals on a flower or on flower after flower. Finally, one, two, three, four, five, he called out. He plucked the flower from the ground and held it up to Kiori. Is this it? It is, the fairy replied. And now we will help you find the dragon master. Pink flower with red, huh? Kiori sprinkled glittery dust on the flower. It flew out of Drake's hand and planted itself back into the ground. Then it began to grow and grow and grow. The flower grew bigger than Drake. Whoa! Drake exclaimed. Then the flower stem bent toward Drake. The petals surrounded him, and the flower swallowed him up. Good luck finding your friend! Kiori called out. Huh. The flower basically swallowed him? That's crazy. Captured. Chapter 11. Drake tumbled down inside the enormous green tube of the flower stem. It spat him out into the dirt. Drake stood up and looked around. He was underground as his eyes adjusted to the dim light. He heard a voice. Drake, over here! Drake ran toward the voice and discovered Breen behind metal bars, trapped in a cave. Breen, I'm so glad I found you, he yelled. He grabbed the bars and he gave them a tug. They didn't budge. What happened? Who put you in here? It's terrible, Breen answered. An evil ogre scooped me up and brought me here. He's coming back to eat me. An ogre? Drake asked. You mean like a big, mean giant? Breen nodded. Can you get me out of here, Drake? Drake studied the cave. He wouldn't be able to bend the thick metal bars. He did not see a way out. What can I do, he wondered. Suddenly, the ground beneath his feet began to shake. The ogre is coming back, Breen yelled. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I need food in my tum-tum, the ogre chanted. Drake turned to see an enormous creature with a big belly stomping toward them. Run, Drake! Save yourself, Breen shouted. If you get eaten, you'll never save your land. Go now! Breen's right. If I don't leave now, I may never find Fallon, Drake thought. But I can't leave her here to get eaten. He threw his body in front of the cave. The ogre roared as he thumped toward Drake. Ah! Chapter 12. The Spring Dragon. I can't let the ogre hurt you, Breen, uh, Drake yelled. He bravely faced the ogre. If you want Breen, you'll have to go through me, he called out. The ogre stomped up to Drake. Drake could feel the monster's hot breath on his face. Stay back, Drake warned, balling his hands into fists. The ogre ignored Drake. He moved past him and he pulled apart the bars on the cave with his strong arms. Breen calmly stepped through the opening. Thanks, Blorp, Breen said. Did I do a good job pretending? Blorp asked. Breen nodded. The best. Drake stared at him. You mean he's not dangerous? Drake asked Breen. Blorp? No, he's a softy, Breen said. She waved goodbye to the ogre. See you later. The ogre, ogre marched off. That was another trick? Drake asked. But he wasn't hungry with Breen? A wave of... Er, but he wasn't angry with Breen. A wave of relief washed over him. 
Another test, and you passed, Breen said. You stayed to protect me when you could have run away to save yourself. Now Fallon knows you can be trusted. Drake's heart was still pounding. That was pretty scary. That was a pretty scary test. Fallon has to be careful, Drake, Breen said. There are greedy people in the world. People who would steal her and use her powers just for themselves. That is why she lives in secret, and why she will only help those who are worthy. So does that mean I get to see Fallon now? Drake asked. Breen grinned. Follow me. She led him out of the cave. Breen led Drake into a bright meadow. A beautiful green dragon sat on the hill covered with flowers. Her wings looked like big leaves. The tiny leaves sprouted from her body. Fallon, we made it, Breen said. Her dragon stone began to glow, and Breen smiled. Fallon says that you have been very brave and smart, Drake, she said. She will help you. Thank you, Fallon, Drake said. Can we go see my dragon worm? He can take us to Bracken right away. Breen climbed on to Fallon's back. Come on, Drake, she said, helping him up. The spring dragon flapped her wings and flew into the air. They soared over the forest and the meadows. Finally, Fallon landed, and Breen and Drake climbed off her back. They walked through the same tunnel as before until they came to a dirt wall. Fallon glowed, and a hole opened up. They stepped back into Inisbanba. Worm was waiting for them. I knew you would find Fallon, he told Drake. Good job. Thanks, Worm, Drake said. He held out his hand to Breen. Touch Fallon, and then I will touch Worm, he instructed. Once we're all connected, we can transport. I've never been outside in his Banba before, Breen said. This is so exciting. She grabbed Drake's hand and put one hand on her dragon. Then Worm transported them all to Bracken in a burst of green light. <laughs> Chapter 13 Green Drake, Worm, Breen, and Fallon landed in the fields of the Bra of Bracken. Breen looked around at the cracked earth and the withered crops. This will be a very big job for me and Fallon, she said. Curious villagers started to gather around them. Then Drake heard a familiar voice. Drake! He turned to see Bo running toward him. The other dragon masters, Roriana and Petra, followed him, along with Griffith, the wizard. But Bo was running faster than any of them. Bo! Drake cried. He ran up to Bo and hugged him. It's really you! What do you mean? Bo asked. Who else would it be? That's a very long story, Drake said. I'll tell you later. Right now, meet Breen and Fallon, the spring dragon. They're going to fix Bracken for us. Anna gazed at Fallon with wide eyes. She turned to Breen. Your dragon is beautiful. Even more beautiful than I imagined, Petra said. She is beautiful, Rory agreed. I hope she's powerful, too. Just you watch, Breen said. Please stand back, everybody. Everyone made a wide circle around Breen and Fallon. Breen faced her dragon, and her dragon stone glowed. Fallon, please bring the crops back to these fields, she said. Beans, peas, oats, barley, wheat, potatoes, cabbages, carrots, parsnips, spinach. Breen stopped and looked at the dragon. Masters, I am, for am I forgetting anything? Onions, Drake replied. Don't forget the onions. Flowers would be nice, too. Anna added. Breen nodded. And onions and flowers, she told Fallon. The dragon's body began to glow with a soft yellow-green light. She closed her eyes. The light traveled through Fallon's body down to her feet and then shot into the ground. The light spread across the brown, broken earth. Fallon is sending her energy into the land, Drake realized. He looked down at his feet and saw the dragon's light glowing beneath them. He felt the dirt start to move, not shake, 
like an earthquake. The cracks in the earth just closed up. Then something began to gently push up from underneath the ground. Breen twirled in a circle around her dragon, breathless. They all watched as Fallon, as Fallon's glow grew brighter and brighter. The Dragon Flower, Chapter 14 Slowly, tiny green shoots sprouted up from the dirt. It's working, Drake cried. Step off the fields to make room for the plants. Every race, or everyone raced to the huts on the edge of the village. Then they watched the plants grow at amazing speeds. They grew taller and taller with each second. Soon tall stalks of young green wheat waved in one spot. In another, the bushy green leaves of spinach appeared. Drake's heart leapt at the sight of skinny green onion tops growing in neat rows. Fallon's glow slowly faded. Breen stopped spinning. The villagers started or stared. Their mouths were open at the sight of the green crops. Nobody spoke for a moment. Then Rory yelled out, Wow! That was amazing! The villagers let out a cheer. The dragon masters and Griffith ran out into the fields. Breen was slumped up against Fallon in a circle of yellow and red flowers. The dragon's ears were drooping. What do you think? Breen asked, with a happy and proud smile on her face. I think that all those fairy tests were very much worth it, Drake said. You saved a whole kingdom. Thank you, thank you both. Yes, thank you, Griffith said. You are one of the most powerful dragons I have ever seen, Fallon. You both must be quite tired. Worm and I can transport you home, Drake offered. That would be very nice, Breen agreed. Her dragon stone glowed. Fallon says she was happy to help you all. Drake and Worm quickly transported Breen and Fallon back to Inbus Banba. I'll miss you, Drake told Breen, even if you did trick me a lot. She grinned. Come back to Inbus Banba any time, Drake. We can play hide-and-seek, for real. Then Drake and Worm returned to the fields of Bracken. Anna looked closely at the yellow and red flowers. I've never seen flowers like these before, she said. They look like dragons. Drake knelt down to get a better look. You're right, he remarked. The flower looks like a dragon's head with fire shooting out of it. And the petals look like spikes or horns, Petra added. Fascinating, Griffith said. We should call it a dragon flower, Rory suggested. Anna nodded. That's perfect. Suddenly they all heard the low rumble of thunder. Dark clouds appeared in the sky. <sighs> a storm is coming, Petra cried. Rain will be good for the crops, Bo said. I don't think it's a storm, Drake said. Look, Rory cried. Nero, the thunder dragon, flew across the sky. Dun dun dun! Who was Nero again, Apollo? He's the Echo's dragon. Uh huh. The thunder dragon. Yeah. Chapter fifteen: A new mission. Nero swooped down toward them. Petra's eyes widened. Is the thunder dragon going to attack? She asked. No, Griffith said. His dragon master is not with him. Rory gasped. <gasps> I almost forgot about Echo. Echo was Griffith's first student. She had run away with her dragon, Nero, a long time ago. Her years Here years later, she tried to free King Roland's dragons. She failed and was captured, but Rory helped her escape. Rory had even stayed with Echo for a while. Nero landed next to Worm. The two dragons stared at each other for a moment. Then Drake heard Worm's voice in his head. Nero is worried about Echo, Worm said. He says she is missing. Drake turned to Griffith. Rory and I last saw Echo in Maldred's workshop. Maldred used red dust to make her disappear. We should have, we should have tried to find her or checked on Nero, Rory said, but we've been too busy trying to save Bracken. 
Griffith frowned. What happened? It's complicated, Drake said. Echo was trying to help Maldred get control of the Naga. I'm not surprised that she was helping a dark wizard, Bo chimed in. Echo just wanted the Naga to be free, Drake explained. And in the end, she ended up helping us, Rory interrupted. Maldred was going to feed us to the Naga. Echo tried to save us. That's when Maldred tossed magic dust on Echo, and she disappeared. Griffith stroked his beard. If that is the case, then we must help her. Rory turned to Bo, Petra, and Anna. We need to save her, please, she asked. Drake and I owe her. Of course, Anna said, and Bo and Petra nodded. Then it looks like we have our next mission, Drake said. We have to find Echo. Echo, 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 Echo. And that is the next mission. That was the end of book 14, Land of the Spring Dragon. And next time, maybe we'll find Echo, huh, Paulo? Adios! Adios!